We're already at lecture act three. So, so far we've done part of the, the basic statistics and it's gonna become more and more complex. So last week, if you did the uh, assignment or watched the video, we learned all about t-tests, which you should have also seen in your undergraduates. And now we're gonna do ANOVA, part of which you might have also still seen your uh, undergrads. And then next week, correlation and regression. And then we're gonna build on that to do more complex things like factor analysis, structure equation modeling, and multi-level uh, modeling. But hopefully some of the things which I'll talk to you about today will be familiar and things that you will have uh, seen. So, last week was all about visualization. Today is all about ANOVA and all its different variants, MANOVA, ANCOVA, some things you might have come across as well. And so the goals for today is that I talk to you about ANOVA and its variants and also about some non-parametric alternatives which you have just in case you can't run an ANOVA. So sometimes assumptions will be violated and you'll be asked to look at for alternatives and we'll talk a little bit about alternatives for those. So after today, you should be able to complete uh, the following sections in your assignments. You should be able to do the bit on ANOVA, ANCOVA, MANOVA, as well as the non-parametric alternatives to these. So we're getting close to the to the end of the uh, assignment, so you should actually be able to deal, deal quite a bit of chunk for assignment uh, one already because next week is correlation and uh, regression and we still have after that, a two by two design, like uh, interactions. But then that will be the end of uh, all you have to use for assignment, uh, assignment one. So. so, ANOVA. Raise your hand if you've never conducted an ANOVA uh, an analysis of uh, uh, variance. You've all done an ANOVA, right? As part in SPSS, you've all done it as part of your, your undergraduates. So just to remind you, back to the basics. So. Different, uh, different scientists use different notations. So some of them use the SIG notation, some of them use the S notation, some of them use the variance notation. But we're in, it's analysis variance, so we're interested in, uh, in variance. I'm sorry, we're stuck here with that topic. Okay. Uh, you haven't missed much except for me telling you that all, today is all about ANOVA. And today we we're going to talk all about ANOVA and our anchor. Okay. So, uh, so it's a measure of variability, which you should remember also from uh, from uh, from the first lecture. So you have standard deviations, interquartile range. So these are measures of, of uh, variability, and we're interested in trying to understand where the variability comes from. In this case, with, uh, with ANOVA, and whether it's uh, allocated to things between uh, uh, groups or within groups, and that's the, the core for the ANOVA design. So uh, I've actually already jumped the, the gun, and I named you other measures for uh, for, uh, for for for, uh, for spread. So standard deviation. Interquartile range, those are other measures of spreads in a distribution. So we can calculate it, uh, we can calculate uh, this for a sample. So we can calculate how much variance there is in a sample. Usually we then want to make inferences about whether a relationship holds in the population. And that's why we use inferential statistics and we use p values to see if the relationship we found in our sample would likely uh, extend or will be able to reject the null hypothesis that actually holds in the, uh, in, the in the population. That's what we're doing with our with our test statistics. Everybody with me as to the principles. And so remember, the standard deviation is the square root of our, of, our, of our variance. Yeah. So why would you need an alpha? So we want to compare differences between two or more means. So sometimes if you only have two means, you would use an independent complex t-test as you've done last time. But sometimes you have uh, an, uh, an experiment where you uh, assign people as in, your, uh, as in your assignment. You have people assigned to different cores, to blue, red, gray, uh, purple, yellow, and, uh, and uh, you want to find out these type of core effects. So you have more than, one, uh, uh, more than two groups you want to compare, so it's not just experimental and control, but you have multiple experimental uh, groups or you have multiple control groups, that would be a scenario where you would use ANOVA. And so why would you not simply run a bunch of t-tests? Any, uh, anybody knows uh, why you wouldn't just do a bunch of, uh, bunch of t-tests? Because you could just, like, uh, I could pair blue with red, blue with yellow, blue with uh, green. So why would you not just do that? Manipulate your data and more chance you type something error. Yes. So, so, yeah, so unless we do chance correction, so one of, if we run 20 tests, one of them will be significant by, uh, by chance if we put our significance level at 0 0.05, right? So, if every single test we run is an additional uh, thing we have to take into account, and so that's why in principle we wouldn't run a bunch of t tests, 
So we try to do an overall test and then post hoc, for example, try to find out where the difference lies that causes the overall test to be uh, significant. Yeah? So that's in uh, neat cases to why we wouldn't need to just simply run a bunch of, uh, bunch of t tests. So type one uh, uh, error. So, uh, so how does it work? So imagine that you have a group with three, uh, you have a design with three groups. You have three means, x1, x2, x3. There's going to be some math. You don't need to know the math, but I have to tell you a little bit about the math so you can go back and check in case your piece of supervisor asks to sort of know about it. We want to find out if these means significantly uh, differ, and we can calculate the grant mean, which is just based on the on these three uh, these three uh, means, and we can then uh, use within and between sum of squares to find out where uh, the difference lies. So we can get the variation within each sample. That's within some of course, and we can find out how much variation there is between uh, uh, between each uh, each of those three uh, samples, yeah, or e between each of those three conditions. And the the principle is that if this is larger than this, so the variation between groups is larger than within groups, then there might be an effect of uh, between the groups between condition rather than just random noise, random variation. That's in a nutshell, very simply put. What's uh, what the design is about? So it's based on the sum of squares, which you then compare within and between uh, uh, groups or uh, or means. So the basic uh, gist is that if between is larger than within, you find evidence for an, for an effect. Everybody understands this. So this should also be uh, ring a bell in terms of what you've covered in your undergraduate. And if not, you can get any type of statistics books and work through the formula and read out that, uh, read out more. So the f-test is actually based on this uh, mean of between sum of squares and uh, within sum of squares, and then we go and look up the degrees of freedom, which you might have done perhaps in year one, even in these giant tables, and you try and see if it's uh, if it's uh, significant. That's the uh, that's the, the idea. You look up uh, the degrees, uh, the corresponding degrees of freedom, and then you compare that to uh, the significance level. So far, so good. So that's just uh, that should all be a recap of what you uh, know about. Uh, if I'm going too fast, do let me know. So there, you should also know that there's many assumptions to uh, to this type of uh, test. So the dependent variable is uh, is, uh, is interval. So you can't use it if your outcome is uh, a yes/no type of response, or if it's an ordinal type of uh, uh, grade of like a lot to a little. So if it's like four categories of some sort, then you can't use that an ANOVA because it has to. Uh, for calculating with means, so we have to have interval uh, uh, variables. Yeah, we have to have independence uh, observation. So uh, if scores are influenced by one another, we don't have independent sampling, and then some of the basic premises of statistics are violated. So why would that happen, for example? And we'll talk more about this when we talk about multi-level models. But imagine a scenario where we test uh, 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 children in classes. And those children are not necessarily independent from one another because they will be influenced by the other children in the class. And so in that case, people would use multi-level type of models to account for the non-independence that children might not be independent, so to speak, because they are all parted in the same classroom because they have the same teachers or the same socioeconomic backgrounds or some other things you want to account for. So in some cases, you won't have independent observations because, for example, uh, uh, people influence each other. So if we uh, if you had a sampling design where we had one group and it's entirely sampled uh, in Gosford, and the other group, it, it, the experimental group, is sampled in Gosford, and the control is in uh, in Heaton, then we don't have independent observations because they will influence each other based on the location where they are. Yeah, so that's a very important principle uh, from uh, from statistics. So if you do any type of inference, there has to be uh, independent observations. And more about this when we discuss both level models and how we can remedy some of these cases. Because sometimes you are interested in, uh, in testing children or are interested in testing people to where there is some type of non-independence, but then there are solutions to that type of problem. So it should be normally distributed for each category of, uh, of the uh, uh, independent uh, variable. So we, our uh, dependent variable should have like a nice, you know, from data visualization, this type of uh, this Gaussian type of curve. We should find that roughly every, uh, every uh, category. And again, if you have uh, if you have a bimodal variable or just a variable two categories, then by definition, it won't conform to this uh, normality uh, assumption. 
Then this beast you might have heard of, which is homogeneity of variance. Anybody who hasn't heard of homogeneity of, uh, of, uh, of variance, so it's something you uh, come across also. You remember Levine's test, which will uh, also uh, come back to you again. But basically, it's the notion that the error should be spread equally across the uh, across the categories or across a line, for example. We'll also talk about when you have regression because you also have homogeneity of variance. Uh, it comes in a different name there. It's a heteroskedasticity, which you might have heard, heard of. It's a similar type of, uh, of issue. So it's basically the notion that the variance should be the variance in the error should be equal across uh, across a range. It should be equal across conditions, or it should be equally across a, a spread of uh, values. And if that's violated, then we might be under or overestimating uh, the error. So if errors are if there's lots of more variance in one end of the spectrum than at the other end of the spectrum, then we're over or underestimating the errors. And that's uh, what we uh, have. So I've put in some links for you if you uh, want to find out more or find out more in terms of formal uh, definitions. You know, research uh, Mark Wahlberg. So this is a meme for uh, for start statisticians. So there's lots of uh, jokes about Mark Wahlberg and statistics. So you'll see pop up a couple of times. So time for a new data set. We might get bored with the flights data set by now, so we're going to do something else. So you can go on the slides to this uh, to this uh, uh, website, and you can download the SPSS data set to your working folder. So it's a link that should be uh, it should be clickable from in your uh, assignment, and then you can open the SPSS uh, data set, and then you can uh, so do that now, and then you can uh, sort of see what I'm doing here, and then there will be a part uh, where you can then we'll have an exercise, and then you can. Uh, with it yourself. 